Good morning. We're here at the EUI conference in Brussels, and I have the pleasure to have Florian Ermacora, um, the genius behind the clean energy package, or at least the electricity market design, who's been kind enough to um, explain to us what's going to happen next. So, Florian, what is sector coupling? None of us understand it. Explain it to us. We have um, a big challenge that's the decarbonisation of the energy sector, and uh, the decarbonisation needs to happen at least costs, otherwise it will not be acceptable. And if it happens at least costs, uh, all energy carriers, all sectors uh, needs to, to integrate uh, to come to those uh, objectives, the, which means it cannot be an electricity only model to come to sound decarbonization. Um, gas will play, uh, have to play a role as a complementary to wind and sun, um, for example. Um, heat comes into the, into the equation. We need to um, allow all energy carriers to contribute to um, least cost decarbonization. So what you mean is it's a mechanism to try and ensure that electricity, gas, hydrogen, whatever energy source or vector can compete equally in the light of the decarbonisation objectives that we set in order to get the lowest, car, lowest cost method that, that we can find. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's the idea, um, that we achieve a level playing field, uh, provide for, for incentives uh, for the energy carriers to contribute their, their bid. Incentives, classically, I guess, through, um, through big targets, um, but um, ideally not through technology-specific um, uh, targets, because uh, it's difficult for us to pick the, the winner in this race for uh, least cost decarbonisation. That's terrific, but okay, so if we need to find a place or a way in the future whereby renewable electricity, hydrogen, biomass um, all compete with each other equally, how are we going to do that? There's no business case to invest in hydrogen today and it's three or four or five times the, the, the cost of natural gas. How are we going to do this? By all means, um, we see that there is no investment case uh, for, the, for the moment. But um, I think that's a personal um, uh, opinion that uh, we need to set um, an overall CO2 target and otherwise uh, allow, really, as I said, uh, technologies to, um, to compete. Of course, um, it would be important uh, to foster um, research, and, and, um, but, uh, but otherwise um, it's very difficult to see that for each of the energy carriers we pick uh, particular um, uh, targets uh, which could be percentages uh, uh, in terms of pipeline content and, uh, and so on. I have my doubts that's uh, at least uh, at this stage not, not commission policy. So you see the ETS to be the driving force behind um, the I market. think uh, very much so that um, the CO2 price uh, should be the, the driving um, force and then uh, we need to take a number of flanking measures uh, to make it possible, um, that competition. But the cost of renewable hydrogen, green hydrogen, um, low carbon hydrogen is crazily expensive today. What, we, what do we need to do in order to get the price down? I mean, in 2009, we invested heavily in renewables, and we got the price down by a factor of X. Um, we have to do the same thing one way, one way or the other in relation to hydrogen. How do you think we should do that? I could uh, well imagine that the policy strategy shows the place and the need for, uh, for hydrogen um, within the frame of the overall ambition to reduce um, uh, CO2. Um, it's very much about uh, investors' um, uh, certainty. As soon as we come then to economies of, uh, of scale and real cooperation among the energy carriers, we will see also price decreases for the production of, uh, of hydrogen. You come then also to the question um, which color the hydrogen um, should have. Um, does it need to be uh, green or is it uh, fine to have uh, low carbon um, hydrogen through CCS um, or pyrolysis um, uh, processes? But uh, again, it's very difficult um, uh, for us as, uh, as officials um, to, to set here precise um, uh, targets. We are quite confident that uh, as soon as uh, things are uh, going and running towards the overall ambition of reducing um, CO2 um, with an enabling um, framework, um, that uh, things will go into the, into, into the right way. An enabling framework, is that, for example, guarantees of origin, gas standards? Um, we need to surely be able to define 
what is a green molecule, what is a blue molecule, and what's the carbon content of each different molecule? Absolutely. Um, we know this um, from the electricity sector that um, least cost also means European uh, cooperation. European cooperation means cross-border flows of electricity and of uh, gas, whatever kind of gas uh, it is. And uh, to enable uh, this, one indeed needs to have the right definitions in, uh, in place, uh, at least for the consumers to, to know, but also for the, um, to fulfill targets, to know whether it's uh, a really decarbonized uh, energy carrier or even uh, zero carbon uh, energy carrier or, or not. So from that point of view, yes, we need def definitions in the first place. Yes, we need uh, certificates and guarantees of uh, origin uh, across Europe um, to make sure that uh, electricity and gas uh, can, can cross borders. Going now on to competition and gas markets. Um, I think we all agree that um, Central Western Europe markets are working quite well, all in all. But we see that markets in other parts of the European Union are working less well. Mm -hmm. um, the markets are less liquid, shall we say. That's right. Um, what do you believe needs to be done in relation to creating more liquidity, completing the gas internal market? We have... Uh Obviously, our, our third energy package, uh, liberalization and opening market um, legislation and um, network codes which are implementing in quite detail the, the principles um, to allow for cross-border um, trade. So the first thing remains uh, the proper implementation of those, those rules, which is um, quite evident in uh, some parts of Europe, you mentioned them, uh, and not so evident in other parts of, um, of Europe. So that's, that's uh, for sure the, the first thing. We have invested a lot and worked a lot on, uh, on infrastructure, uh, in particular in areas of Europe where you have a really dominant uh, supplier, maybe even just one, one supplier, and infrastructure helps to get cross-border flows um, going. We have to continue this, um, this uh, process. One might have to, to think um, pro possibly about more targeted um, uh, rules or tailor-made um, rules um, to really hit those areas in, in Europe or sectors uh, where things do not work that, um, that well, which could um, be achieved, for example, by a good uh, benchmarking, monitoring um, uh, system, and then enabling um, authorities, um, whoever it, uh, it will be, to take um, targeted uh, measures to open market. That's fascinating. We look forward to seeing what, what comes out of there, because I'm sure no matter what I ask you, you're not going to tell me more about that, so I'm not going to go further on that. Uh, that that's uh, that's, um, that's, that's right, uh, as I'm at this stage not in a position to, to um, okay. tell you. Okay, yeah. I, won't, I won't test you on that. Yeah. Okay. okay, energy security. Mm -hmm. um, this is in relation to the gas market, energy security has been one of the big things of the Commission for years. That's right. And over the last 10 years, we've spent an awful lot of money connecting lots of different markets together um, with a great deal of success. Pretty yeah. much every market now has access to multiple sources of gas and by the time the PCI is completed, every market will, including LNG. Yeah. So do you think that the Commission can now try success on this? No, it's a, it's a continuous uh, process, that's for sure. As you said, we have seen uh, some very good um, achievements in, in security of supply, um, uh, diversification of, of supplies, more, more infrastructure and um, proper implementation or quite good implementation of the uh, regulatory framework which we have set at, at European level, which aims at uh, liquid uh, markets, which is a precondition for, for security of supply. Um, this issue needs, however, to remain high on the, on the agenda, um, also for, for gas. Um, it's difficult to see a green deal without uh, security of supply, so from that point of view, um, efforts in that direction are inherent uh, in, in the new policy uh, program of the, of the European Commission. Okay, final question in relation to electricity. Um, first of all, congratulations on the market design, extraordinary piece of work, um, but it's not done. Um, there's still lots of challenges left. We're moving to a market that is increasingly dominated by uh, capacity based on high capex and low opex, um, which gives challenges to wholesale markets. <coughs> What's left to be done? 
I think indeed that uh, we have a proper and good uh, regulatory framework uh, now in the electricity sector with the um, uh, market design initiative which has just been um, concluded. Um, a key point there will be now to implement, to make it live. Uh, make it live means um, uh, full access of uh, renewables um, to the market. This means also um, keeping state subsidies in, in check. Often state subsidies are going to conventional um, uh, energies, but uh, which would be to the detriment of, uh, of renewables, which could then not uh, compete in the, in the market. We will see a lot of decentralized um, electricity uh, production. Uh, based now on the new rules um, with new players like aggregators uh, or other service, uh, service providers, uh, we will see um, a very uh, important uh, move towards um, decentralized energy production. And most importantly, as I said um, uh, before, um, cost-effective uh, decarbonization also in the electricity sector will um, happen at the European level. It will not uh, just happen at national level. That's why uh, it will be important to implement the rules on the flows of electricity across the, the borders. Perfect. Florian, thank you so much for taking your time to talk to us today. And um, check out the agenda of the program that we have today at the conference. And we look forward to seeing you here at next year's event. Thank you, Florian. Okay, very welcome.